So I've been really busy today uh, barrowing compost and wood chips onto the plot and it's all frozen so I thought I'd just show you around the big changes that are taking place this year. So the first thing is these IBC tanks. There's such a lot of space wasted on top of them and so what I'm planning to do is get 30 litre containers well first off what I'm planning to do is put a sheet of plywood on top then 30 litre containers on top of that and grow my carrots in there and start a 30 litre container every two weeks and I think that's going to be a great way to grow carrots they're going to be really high up and away from the carrot fly and um, yeah I should grow nice straight carrots in the compost and then I can just use that compost to mulch my beds once I'm finished with it so the next big change is I'm going to take a bit more care with my composting. See if I can get hotter compost and be more careful about what I put in there so that I've got less weed seeds. Because one of the problems with the homemade compost is loads and loads of weed seeds. And I'm going to turn my compost a bit more. So I've got two bins here and I can turn those into this bin. And this bin is full of finished compost. So the next big change is we're going to grow less summer flowering brassicas. So that's less cauliflowers, less summer purple sprouting broccoli. Because we find that really there's, people don't want uh, brassic, so many brassicas in the middle of summer. There's just so much other stuff to eat. Um, and as a result of that, that frees up this bed. And this bed was New Zealand spinach. And because we're growing for less people this year, 14 instead of 28, we're not going to need New Zealand spinach there. And these two beds at the end there, here, this is just being stored here, there's no purpose for it. Those two beds had um, raspberries in them. And again, we've just got enough raspberries at home. So we've freed this whole bed up. And so this now is going to be all winter squash uh, interplanted with sweet corn. And we've never grown winter squash and sweet corn in quantity on my plot. So it's nice to have all that extra space. And I've still got some gooseberries here, but this also used to be all gooseberries. And to be honest, there's only so many gooseberries you can eat. And we used to lose a lot of these gooseberries to mildew. And so I've put a new bed in here instead. And so this bed at the moment is all purple sprouting broccoli, but it's going to be our storage beetroot. So the whole bed will be storage beetroot. And so that's another big change. And we're kind of going all in on early baking potatoes. And we found that these coal frames, these big coal frames, are really great for starting baking potatoes in April. Um, and because they're nice and warm and sheltered and frost free in these, um, we get a really good crop in early July and you know that's at least a month six weeks before we normally would have baking potatoes and we're doing some other tricks to grow early ba baking potatoes even earlier than that so the next thing is we're going all in on peppers in these low tunnels and uh, we've got five low tunnels and that's enough for all of our peppers um, we're only doing our sweet peppers in these though and we used to do those in the polytunnel, but we're switching away from that. I'll tell you what we're doing in the polytunnel later. All of our chili, or most of our chili peppers, we're gonna do in this little greenhouse here, which we previously really only used for storage and drying of um, squash, onions, and garlic, but we won't have quite as much to dry this year. So, you know, we're gonna make a much more effective use of that fill it with lovely chilli peppers. So what else is changing? Well, I'm going to use these big planters here for courgettes. So I think they're going to look really nice. That's just my stock plant. It's a perennial kale for cuttings. And, oh yeah, I'm really looking forward to a lot of early strawberries this year. So these are our second early strawberries. These are going to go under a cold frame top in February time. And so I'm really happy about that because I love strawberries. And I'm thinking 
I haven't 100% made the decision yet, but I'm thinking that this path here, I'm going to use, I'm going to put containers with potatoes on this path because it's nice and wide. Um, and I think I can just get a really useful crop down the edge here, a bit extra. I've also changed the way that I'm doing my asparagus. So I've put these supports up because it used to always just flop all over the place, getting in the way of the paths and getting in the way of me, more importantly. And another change I'm making is I'm going to try growing um, spring onions in this asparagus bed because there's plenty of space and plenty of time to get a crop of spring onions whilst the asparagus is still really small. Well, well, it's being harvested basically. So that's the main changes on my plot, apart from the polytunnel. And if you're a regular watcher of my YouTube videos, you probably know a lot about what's happening in the polytunnel already. So you might want to switch off at this point, but loads more early strawberries in these containers. These are going to go all up here on the uh, crop rails. And then as these are starting to finish, I'm going to switch over to Golden Purse Lane uh, in bigger containers. And again, they'll go up in the canopy. So I used to have a trestle table that went all the way along here. Well, I've still got it, but I've taken it out because I want to use this space. Well, at this time of year, I want to maximize light levels. But I want to use the space for growing things at all. So I'm planning to grow cucumbers and tomatoes. Cucumbers and tomatoes and then melons at this end and melons at that end. And then right at the ends, I'm going to be starting my carrots in, con in containers. So they'll look like this. Not quite as big as these because these are 50s. More like this one, which is a 30 or 35. Um, and I might have some chili peppers and other bits and pieces on these on these trestle tables as well. So yeah, lots more high growing stuff. And then all the way down here, this will all be tomatoes. Uh, maybe a stick of one cucumber in there. And then I've got a lot of space in front of the tomatoes. And that's where I used to grow the peppers, but I'm not growing the peppers in here now. So I'm growing them outside. They seem to do better in those low tunnels than they do in the polytunnel. So I'm trying to think of the best thing to grow in here. And I'm thinking I want things that are really deep rooted because it gets really hot in here. And I don't want things that are going to uh, have shallow surface roots. So I'm thinking parsnips, carrots and beetroot to grow in here. All favourite crops to be harvested in October. Um, parsnips perhaps just to make soups and things but they'll store for a while and the carrots also for storage uh, and eating fresh of course and the beetroot for storage because that's when we harvest our storage beets so yeah let me know what you think of good interplants for these beds in front of the peppers and the tomatoes uh, they won't get there will be a little bit of shade, but I think there'll still be plenty of sunlight for them, uh, especially at midday. And then as you can see, lots of experiments here with different varieties, three different varieties of carrots overwintering, all at different densities to come at different times. And I think that's the main changes in the polytunnel apart from a different planting plan in winter which i've already mentioned in a previous video but just for completeness this bed here will be lettuces because the lettuces do really well in the polytunnel over winter but the spinach does really well in the cold frames over winter not a lot better in here than out there so i'm thinking move all that to the cold frames move more lettuces into here and then I'm also doing this progressive bed clearance through January February 
so that by the end of February this will all be spring crops. So cauliflowers, uh, calabrese, Romanesco cauliflowers, radishes, turnips, carrots, maybe a few spring lettuces. I've got some in here which I might leave. Um, but you know, and an a complete extra crop because by the end of February, I don't really need this spinach and this lettuce down here. So you can see I've already started doing my interplanting of the calabrese into here. So yeah, and I've done some experiments here with, in theory, an early garlic crop and in theory, an early onion crop. And I don't yet know, obviously, whether those are actually going to turn out to be early or not, whether these onions will just go to seed, whether this garlic will be any use or not. But if I can, then I might keep doing that in future years. If not, then this whole bed again will be lettuces and probably not spring onions. I notice spring onions, they don't like the heat in here. Although this is a variety which I won't be doing again, which is North Holland Blood Red, which I love in spring and summer. Uh, an early autumn, but I don't I don't like it over winter. It's 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 a bit thin and spindly by comparison with uh, All the other spring onion varieties that I'm growing So hope you like that quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon